What's up, beautiful family? Hope everyone is having a great uh, afternoon. So, um, I'm headed to grab some lunch, and I wanted to come on here for a minute and just tell you guys about um, our experience yesterday. So, sorry if that's shaking a little bit, guys. Um, there we go. So, me and my husband uh, attended the Jesus 20 conference yesterday, and we were really excited to go. Um, when we got there, there were tons of people. I expected that. We stood in line for about three hours. We got there, probably got there at, we got there at, I want to say either 12 or 1. I think it was around 12 or so. And uh, we stood in line for about three hours. And we got in, finally, after going like through security and everything. And, um, we were so hungry. <laughs> we didn't like not prepare at all as far as like eating goes. Like we ate a good breakfast, but we were starving come lunchtime. And so they had some really good um, food booths uh, in there. And so we ate at this little teriyaki, like this Japanese uh, food booth, like and they had chicken teriyaki and noodles and stuff like that. So we got our food and we ate. And then there were so many people that we weren't able to get up to like where the main seating was. And so anybody who did not have tickets, um, so like they only allowed a certain amount of people in there, uh, but it got to a certain point where they sold out and they weren't even allowing anybody uh, into overflow. But if you had bought a ticket, then obviously you were guaranteed uh, to get in and to get seated and all that stuff. But they had this little place where um, not for overflow people who didn't have tickets, but um, there was like a separate area that wasn't in like the main area. <laughs> uh, they had seating for those of us who um, kind of trickled in a little later. So we finally got, uh, you know, seated or whatever. But, you know, the whole experience for me, it just started out really weird all the way in the beginning. And... I don't want to go into like kind of where it started, but I just want to kind of talk about like the main parts because um, just the whole thing was in my spirit. It just felt off. And the reason why I want to talk about this and, you know, last night I uploaded a video on my community or a, I'm sorry, a, a picture um, of me and my husband on my community tab, basically just saying like how it was one of the worst experiences that I'd ever had and that I was going to make a video about it. And I already had people jumping down my throat because listen, I understand that like not everybody <laughs> can see with full clarity right now. And for some reason, the Lord has not revealed all truth to everybody. That's just not how it works. Like people are at different stages in their life and their walk uh, spiritually. Some still have a veil over their eyes. And let me just go ahead and say this because a lot of people were asking me because I had wrote in my community tab. I had said that, um, I, that we had walked out uh, during Benny Hinn's message. And a lot of people were like, well, did you know that Benny Hinn was going to be there? Like, that should have just told you everything. And I understand what you guys are saying, but here's the thing, okay? Um, I went into it very optimistic. And I still, like, I know that the Lord was was um, drawing me there for a reason, and I didn't know why. I, now I understand why. But... Um, I was very optimistic because I had not heard Benny Hinn uh, preach. I, I cannot even remember like any kind of message from Benny Hinn at all. I've always seen him on TV, yes. Um, but I can't tell you the last time I've ever heard him preach. I can't, and if I did, it was so long ago when I was younger that I don't even remember what he was preaching. You Okay. So, um, I was very optimistic and a lot, there's a lot of people that have mixed opinions about Benny Hinn, obviously, um, Todd White. I was not, I was not going for Todd White and you guys who have been around me, um, long enough, you guys know that before I saw the gospel in full clarity, um, obviously when you have a veil over your eyes, when you are hearing things that are not truth, you can't see it. You can't hear it because you have a veil over eyes, <laughs> over your eyes. And so 
there was one point where I was like, you know, I was sticking up for Todd White, right? And then when I took that brief time off of YouTube, um, I basically just, I remember like standing in the kitchen one day, I remember exactly where I was and it's not, it wasn't some special prayer. It wasn't some, you know, mathematically perfected, you know, it's, <laughs> it wasn't anything, uh, special that I said to the Lord, you know, it's not some crazy, <laughs> I literally just said, Lord, whatever the truth is, cause I was, I was still kind of confused how, you know, how works played in, how, how that, you know, kind of correlated with the gospel. I really wasn't sure. So I just asked the Lord, I humbled myself enough to say, Lord, I'm not sure. I don't know. Can you please, um, tell me what the truth is. And it wasn't three days. I had just received full clarity on the gospel. This is all walked up. Um, and it's not something that I can explain. It's something that the Lord supernaturally does for you. And you can see the gospel in full clarity, you know, for what it is. And so, um, the Lord did that for me. Come on now. People take their sweet, precious time. So, I received full clarity on the gospel. <laughs> and so, after that, I heard the error in Todd White, Todd White's messages. And I had to end up doing a video um, kind of against him. I had to because at one point I was standing up for him. And then uh, you guys know I had made a video about about him. And I told you guys in that video that before I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, all right, I'm coming to you humbly and I'm going to listen to Todd White again. And I need you, like, if there's error that I have not seen before, I need you to show it to me. And he did. And he was, he was faithful. And so I pointed those things out because people wanted to know. And I felt like I owed that to them having known the truth then. So anyways, I was not going to that conference for Todd White. As far as Benny Hinn went, I was being optimistic. I was trying to give him a chance in my mind because I always seen the man on TV, but had never, I couldn't remember anything that he preached. I, I did not even know where he stood on the gospel, but there were other worship teams there that I had never heard of that I was excited to hear. And there were other preachers and teachers that were going to be there. And so I'd never heard of them before. And so I thought, you know what? It's only, it's not even that far from our home. Um, I want to be around other believers. I feel like the Lord is calling me there for a reason, but I'm not really sure. And so that's why we went. Um, and so anyways, we got there and from the beginning, like things just fell off and Guys, if you're a born-again believer, you have the Holy Spirit with you all the time. He never leaves you. God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He is always with you. He's always teaching you. He's always there. And so when you feel things in your spirit, that's not just you, okay? That's a, that's the Lord speaking to you and telling you things. And the more that those um, things happen, the more you'll start to recognize him speaking to you. And so I just felt, you know, we finally sat down, um, you know, and the sun start is starting to go, starting to go down and the very first worship team comes on. Now I want to say that this worship team was called upper room. I've never heard of them before. I don't know. There was a young kid that came up there that that's where I, there was a couple things and I'm going to, I'm just going to be respectful because I think that, um, I'm not even going to go into that. <laughs> um, but this is the second thing that kind of threw me off because he was up there during worship or whatever. And he's just like, I don't know, like I was very unsettled, um, with him up there and the things that he was saying, but he was the first one to tell people to pray in the spirit. And what is that? That means praying in tongues, praying in spirit, right? And let me just say this, okay? My mom, which you guys have seen before, and I talk about her often, has the true gift of speaking in tongues. Now, the Lord says that this gift, not everybody's going to receive this gift. He gives different people different gifts at certain times um, accordingly. And so not everybody's going to get this gift. Okay. Some people have, you know, the gift of tongues. Some people it's, it's all different. And so 
you know, when you keep telling people to pray in the spirit, pray in tongues, okay, this is not something that everybody has from the Lord. Now, even if you don't have the gift of speaking in tongues, and if you do have the gift, you know when you have the gift. Like, it's a literal gift that comes from God alone himself. This is not something that you acquire over time. This is not something that you are taught from someone else, okay? This is not something that you make up. It's not your own prayer language that you make up, okay? It's not, oh, let's just start with a syllable and da 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 da, da. No. But even if you don't have the gift of tongues, you if you have the Holy Spirit abiding in you, in you, he will tell you when something is wrong. Your little Holy Spirit red flags will go off and say, this is not right. And so even if you don't have the gift of tongues, you can still discern to know when somebody's up there mumbling something from their mouth and it's an antichrist spirit, it's not the Holy Spirit within. It's not the real gift of tongues. And there are people out here doing this. It's an antichrist spirit. And I have never encountered, I've seen it on YouTube. I won't even go into that. Um, who I've seen speak in false tongues. But this guy up here was literally speaking in false tongues. And the Holy Spirit was telling me that inside. I felt so uncomfortable. First of all, don't push that off on other people. Because when you're telling a whole mass of people to pray in tongues, okay, not everybody does that. And secondly, it's not something that you just show off. It's not something that you just pop off um, in front of everybody. That's something that is between you and God. And so that just kind of made me uncomfortable. And the fact that the guy was up there, okay, speaking in tongues is not like, like it's, it's a literal language. And those of you who have the true gift, you know what I'm talking about. And you guys, I'm sure have seen people speak false tongues and it's an antichrist spirit so first of all the guy was up there and people will say oh you know what you shouldn't judge i see that all the time do you guys even know what that scripture means all right if you are okay if, if you um if your buddy goes out and he's a christian and he goes out to dinner and he has a he has a, you know a couple too many beers and gets a little drunk right and you're judging him and you say, you know what? He shouldn't be doing that. But just a week ago, you were doing the same thing, okay? You shouldn't be judging him because you're out here doing the same thing, all right? But the Bible tells us to judge righteously. And the reason why I'm bringing you guys this video today is because when I see something that is wrong, okay, we're supposed to stand up for the gospel. We're supposed to contend for the gospel. And we're supposed to speak out when others are up there preaching to the mass and it's incorrect and it's wrong because there's only one gospel. There's only one gospel that saves. And the Bible teaches that if you're out here preaching another gospel other than the one that was preached to you, the correct gospel, then it is to be accursed seriously and it's blasphemous to literally go up there and act like you're speaking in tongues when you don't actually really have the real gift and that's where my discernment was coming in and so that threw me off and he was just like the things he was saying like it was all it was a show it was fake I didn't like it um and so here, I'm literally texting Chrissy almost the whole time because I feel more at home and at peace literally texting her because she's like, she's just, uh, she's just, um, she's just like a, a safe haven for me. <laughs> and she's like, you know, the Lord sent you there for a reason. Just ask him what it is. Like, you're good. It's okay. And I'm texting my mom too. She's like, just focus on Jesus. And so I'm praying the whole time. I'm like, Lord, I don't know what kind of spirits here, but like I'm rebuking this antichrist spirit. And I'm, I just pray Lord that like you send your guardian angels to like wrap this place. And like, I'm just praying that the real presence of the Holy spirit just comes and I'm just trying to focus on Jesus, but the whole time this whole thing started, I'm just feeling very disconnected. Like even in my car, sometimes I will just be in the presence of the Holy Spirit and it's so overwhelming. I'm bawling. I'm crying. Like I felt more safe and comforted and at home in the Holy Spirit in my own car just a few weeks ago than I did at this place with thousands of other, um, Christians around me. So, you know, the worship goes on, all right, and then there's this other worship team that comes on, and it's it's pretty good. Um, the worship kind of it got it got a little better, and they had this um, worship team up there. They were all in white shirts, and it 
really, was really good. They had another guy that was kind of orchestrating it and it was good. Um, then a woman came on, I think her name's like Stephanie something. I don't remember Fitzgerald or something like that. I may be totally wrong on that. She has real short hair, beautiful voice. Um, then this other guy gets up there and I have no idea who he is, you know, and I could go back and I could look at the lineup because I think on the uh, Jesus 20 Instagram page, it shows all the people that are, but anyways, I could probably pinpoint him out, but he's up there and he's doing, he's telling he's just like kind of pushing, you know, other, you know, like people to speak in tongues as well. Right. And so he starts doing his thing and my discernment is literally popping off. Like, this is not right. This is not, this is not the real gift of tongues. And like, I'm discerning and picking up that there's an antichrist spirit here because Satan will literally try to mimic the real everything. There's a real anointing of the Holy spirit that happens. I received it when I was a little girl, I was 10 years old. Um, but there's also a spirit out there that does weird, wacky things to people that is not the right spirit. It's like what they call the Kindalini spirit or whatever. It's of the devil. Okay. There's a false tongues out there. And those of you who have the Holy Spirit and you can pick up on that. All right. And as well as like when they're not preaching the right gospel, you're, it's, it's another Jesus. And it's not the Jesus of the Bible. It's not the whole, it's not the real Holy Spirit that, that abides in me that was there. I can tell you that. Um, now he was there because I know that wherever I am, he's going to be with me. So I know he was there <laughs> and I'm sure there was, you know, other believers there that picked up on that too. And I'll get to that in a second. But so he's, you know, and I literally got it on video. Okay. And I'll probably make a separate video just to show you guys. And I'm going to try to. I'll probably insert um, some clips at a later time. I'll, I'll, we'll probably make another video to show you guys what I'm talking about. But he's like telling people to just, just to speak in tongues. And like, I just felt uncomfortable because like you just don't tell people like that don't know, like that it's awkward, you know? And I get that some people have that true gift, but like, it's just, I don't know, something was just off. And then he's up there rambling at the mouth, um, and it was literally the same exact thing. It was ah Like it was so, it was a Holy Spirit in me. I still feel like the uncomfortableness of it. It was false tongues. And so then, um, I felt like it got a little better there for a second because there was a guy on there. Um, there's a guy that came up there and his, his name was Michael something. Well, I found out that it's Benny Hinn's son-in-law because Benny Hinn's daughter is married to this guy. Now, I'm going to say this because I'll give credit where it's due. He gave the gospel because he wanted to talk about people's soul and their eternity. And he gave the gospel, which I thought was pretty good. And, um, and I say that because I was tearing up. Like, I... I, I was crying because he delivered the gospel very well. And I felt that overwhelming uh just feeling inside of me and i know it was the holy spirit because that's where the truth was being preached then comes along benny hen and freaking ruins it all ruins it gets up there and this is where we walked out so then he goes i want to bring my father-in-law out here and you know they're all in cahoots together okay so i'm sure that this michael guy knew exactly what benny hen was going to get up there and say because, you know, this is his father-in-law. He knows what's up. He knows what Benny Hinn is all about. And this is where I knew what exactly he was about. My mouth is still to the floor. He got up there, all right? Didn't give the gospel nothing. This is what he said. He said that, I wish I would have known this in my 20s. There is this woman that was trying to teach me and said, he's like, I'll never forget this. She said, that you must die to yourself. And I said, okay, like, you know, that's great. And let me tell you something, because right here, I want you guys to listen to me very carefully. This is where Satan will try to come in and make you think that what I'm telling you is that you shouldn't die to yourself, that you shouldn't pick up your cross and walk daily. That's not what I'm saying, because I want you guys to listen to me very, very clearly. So he's going on, he's saying, oh, she was teaching me that I need to die to myself, die to myself. And I wish I would have listened to her sooner. This literally came out of his mouth. So he's saying, die to yourself, die to yourself. All right. 
and he says that he's talking about how the path is broad the path to destruction is broad and many are on it and he's talking about how the, the the gate or the path to heaven is narrow and few find it then he goes on to say this is what comes out of his mouth he says get it word for word i'll find it word for word he says getting saved is the easy part but staying saved that's the tough part i looked at my husband and you guys know i looked at him i said did you just hear what he just said and my husband bless his heart he is a babe in christ and he knows the gospel more than benny hen knows the gospel I looked at him and he looked at me because he, he, the Holy Spirit told him, he knows, my husband knows the gospel. And he said, something ain't right with this. And I said, did you just hear what he said? He literally, just, oh, he didn't just backload works. He literally said, staying saved is tough. The reason why, he said, many people, they search for that narrow path, but they don't find it. Why? Because they don't sacrifice themselves. They don't die to themselves. They don't pick up their cross and walk daily. I picked up my chair. I said, let's go. And he, he said the same thing. We packed our bags and we left. And what's funny is the people right behind us, I know they heard what I said. They packed up their stuff and they left too. I didn't even wait because Todd White was the last person that was to come on and I wasn't even about to hang around for what he has to say because I know what he preaches and he preaches works. You know, Benny Hinn has sat there and repented of preaching prosperity, but what he needs to repent of is giving the wrong gospel. And that was like the icing on the cake for me. I said, nope. <sighs> Salvation is found in Christ alone. It is by faith alone, not by works. Benny Hinn literally got up there and said that getting saved is easy, but staying saved is tough. Literally told people that salvation is dependent on them and what they do. And if they don't, like I always tell you guys, like when people say that, oh, staying saved is tough, like Benny said, then they're making salvation dependent on what you do or what you don't do. But what does the Bible say? Salvation is found in faith alone and Christ alone, that it's not by work so that nobody can boast. So when you're telling people that getting saved is easy, but um, staying saved is the tough part, then what you're really saying is that your salvation is dependent on you, your actions and your behavior or what you do or what you don't do. You're literally putting salvation in the hands of the flesh when it has nothing to do with us. Now hear me when I say this because people will try to turn this around. Picking up your cross and walking daily with Christ is what we should do. Absolutely. We should sacrifice. We, we should die to ourselves. We should walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. But he literally mixed salvation with discipleship and threw it in, in, in people's faces. And those thousands of people sat there with a veil over their eyes and just received those burdens. It's burdens. Benny Hinn stood up on that stage and put, what did I just tell you guys in my burden message the other day? I gave you the scripture. Jesus says that the Pharisees, Benny Hinn stood up there and put burdens on other people's shoulders that he cannot carry himself, that he can't even lift a finger and uphold himself. That's exactly what he did. And those people sat there and just received those burdens. I was so disappointed that not more people stood up and heard that. Like God literally showed me the deception. He showed me this weird antichrist NAR movement of, of people. They have a form of godliness, godliness, but it's not, it's not the God that is taught of the Bible. It's not. It was an antichrist spirit. What was up there. And that was the literal icing on the cake. And it's time for believers to start reading the Bible for themselves and asking the Lord what his truth is instead of relying on man's opinion of what they think is truth. Because Benny Hinn was literally up there preaching an accursed gospel, a gospel that doesn't save. 
And like I said, it was just really disappointing to see. Like I saw the deception. As I was walking, as we were walking out, I saw all these people just sitting there and taking it in. And if more people had full clarity on the gospel and didn't have that veil over their eyes, they would have seen like I saw, like my husband saw. <clears throat> How was this avoided? Humbly come before Christ and say, Lord, what is your truth? Because people are seeing it and they're hearing it and but it's going in one ear and out the other. It's like the, here's the veil and here here's the truth and they can't see it. Guys, like we as believers have to start standing up for the truth and contending for it. And I am ready to see a movement of true believers where the gospel of Jesus Christ, the true Jesus, the true gospel of Jesus Christ is being preached, okay? Because there's a real antichrist spirit out here. There is a movement out there of its deception, its lies, its burdens, its, its messages that don't save, okay? I didn't feel, I felt the presence of an antichrist spirit there. I felt very disconnected. I felt uncomfortable. I didn't feel like I was at home. And I don't normally feel like that. I have never ever in my whole entire life experienced something like that that I experienced last night. It is time. I am ready to see the real gospel be preached. And people really come to Christ because... These movements, these conferences that people are putting on, and I know, like, I know that people just want to know God and receive God, and 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 they're they're thirsty for Him. But what they're taking in is it, it's not nourishing. It's fake. It's false. It's phony. It's an antichrist spirit, and I picked up on it, and it was very, it was very disturbing. And I just, I, it's like I, I, I walked, we were walking out and I'm just passing all these thousands of people as they're sitting there with a literal veil over their eyes. Because if more people knew the truth, more people would have stood up and walked out. It's time that we take back what Satan has stolen. And I'm going to say this and I'm just going to leave it here, okay? Last night, I was attacked in my sleep by Satan and his minions or whoever he sent out to try to attack me. I have not been demonically attacked in my spirit uh, or in my dreams for over a year. You guys know the video that I made where I woke up and I, to I told you guys what happened. That has not happened since last night. I told my brothers and sisters and I told people that a video was coming soon on this. And Satan knew that I was going to expose the truth. Um, he knew that... I was going to make a video on this and he sent his little minions to attack me and I'm not even going to go into what happened in the dream because it doesn't matter. But that was just confirmation for me that Satan is mad that I'm exposing the truth for what it is. And so, um, you know, I before would have woke up scared. But praise God, the Lord is showing me that any attack that happens in my life and your life too, okay, it all has to go through God. And if God allows an attack on your life or in your dreams or whatever, it is for a reason. It is for uh, a purpose and it's for your good, believe it or not. And so this just goes to show that there really was some funny business that was happening at that conference and it's not of God. And I'm going to expose it for what it is. I'm not going to sit there and just lollipops and rainbows and just take this in and just like say, oh, oh, it's okay. They can just speak in false tongues and they can give a false gospel. It's all right. I wasn't going to sit there for that. The Lord showed me what's really out there. I've never experienced that before, but now I know. And it has lit a fire up underneath me to get the true gospel out there. And you know what? I might just start my own room. I just might start my own conferences and let it grow. Okay? Because I am so sick and tired of seeing these people sit here in deception. You guys have got to start asking God for what his truth is. All right? Because if you're just going to listen to man, he's going to allow you to stay in that deception. If you want to believe what Benny Hinn is doing up there on stage and what he's preaching is truth, 
God's going to let you stay in that deception. If you want to follow him and not go to God and ask him what his truth is, because it's that easy. So simple that you just ask God, God, show me your truth. I don't want to rely on what man has to say. I know I might be wrong. Show me your truth. He will show you. He will supernaturally open up your eyes and show you the truth, but he's not going to do it if you're going to hold your pride there and you're just going to continue to follow man and not Christ. Open up the word and ask God to reveal the truth to you, to open up your eyes so you can see and so you can hear. I was so alarmed at how many people sat there and didn't do anything. They just took, up, took it in. And now those people have left carrying these burdens on their shoulders and now they're going to try to to uphold and maintain their salvation when salvation is freely given it's a gift <laughs> do you have to work for a gift or is a gift given to you freely jesus says that salvation is a gift of god not by works so that nobody can boast and a man that's been standing up there for years and years and who is big as he is on tv with his net worth of whatever it is a man that's been up there doing it that long and can't even see the gospel clearly. He is so deceived by Satan because he doesn't want to humble himself and come to Christ and say, you know what? I might be wrong. I'm so happy for him that he repented of his prosperity teaching, but he needs to come before God and come to the end of himself and ask God, what is the gospel and get it right? Because all these people that he's putting these burdens on their shoulders, it's wrong. All these people are now have left that conference, thousands of people, thinking that their salvation is dependent on what they do or what they don't do. And how sad is that? It's time we take back what Satan has stole. And he's stolen the truth. And he's, re he's trying to replace the real uh, Holy Spirit, the real Jesus. And he's trying to replace it with this Antichrist spirit, with this God that that that's not the God that I served that was up there on that stage and those people should be ashamed of themselves I'm losing my voice <laughs> guys I got to go I got to go get my lunch um I'll probably speak more on this but that was my experience Benny Hinn Todd White Michael whoever his name is all those people that whole movement is false it's false it's false it's false it's not the real Jesus of the Bible and I'm going to stand on it. I'm going to stand for it. And I'm going to expose it for what it is. All right, guys. So um, I'll talk to you guys soon. All right. See ya.